Timothy Kojo, and I'm the spokesperson for the African People's Socialist Party, and I'm here to introduce Chairman O'Malley Yeshitela. Today we are here because 50 years ago, the mural was torn down by Chairman O'Malley Yeshitela, a racist mural, and St. Petersburg has decided to replace the mural um, with a image or a painting that's going to say that the times have changed and now St. Petersburg is a place of diversity. We are here to stand and to say that the times have not changed, that we are in the same position we were when the mural was tore down here 50 years ago. I'm here to introduce Chairman O'Malley Ashitella that will talk more about this mural. And after he's done speaking, then we will come back, I'll come back and ask who would like to ask questions, but no questions until he's done speaking. And I just wanted to thank all the people and the media for coming out. Uhuru. Uhuru. First of all, I want to uh, join Ghazi uh, in uh, offering appreciation to the media and to everyone who's come out for this press conference. I think it's an important uh, press conference. And uh, there are two other persons who should be here. I don't know if they'll make it or not. They are uh, Deanne Lewis, whose brother uh, Tyrone Lewis uh, was gunned down by the St. Petersburg Police Department here in the city in 1996. Uh, and they are, and uh, there's Ali Godfrey, who is the stepmother of uh, Javon Dawson, 17 years old, who was killed uh, by the city of St. Petersburg Police Department in 2008. I want to mention that because uh, the, what we are referencing today is something that occurred 50 years ago, and what the city is attempting to do now uh, is to replace that uh, mural that was there uh, with an image that uh, presupposes that things have gotten so much better for African people in this city subsequent to then. We say that's a lie. So uh, on December 29, 1966, after much protest to the city government of St. Petersburg, I led a march to this city hall where I entered and tore from the wall uh, a four by eight foot mural that had graced this building since 1940. It was a mural that ca uh, characterized the black people in the most horrific and demeaning manner that assaulted the very humanity of my people. It was a mural that every African who went to city council meeting or came to pay a water bill had to look upon with shame and hope that it would not permanently damage the psyche of our children who were unfortunate enough to gaze upon it. Yet even today, the mural is described by media as depicting black troubadours entertaining white picnickers. Obviously, anyone who views this photo of the mural that has been enlarged for this press conference should recognize that black people are not depicted in this mural. This mural was really a, car a racialized caricature of black people that satisfied the viewpoint of a bigoted artist and all its appreciative viewers. I was the leader of the Florida State Chapter of the Student Nonviolent Coordinating Committee. And along with six other, or actually five other African men, was arrested and imprisoned. The others who were jailed with me for this heroic and historic act were John Wesley Bryant, Lemuel Green, Crawford Lewis Jones, Thomas, Tommy Williams, and Joseph Wall. While the city government, judicial system, and white ruling elite painted our action as depraved and criminal, the majority of African people in this city, especially from among the oppressed workers, celebrated the mural's removal. In fact, the removal of the mural was one of the most significant acts of direct action civil disobedience that occurred in the South at a time when direct action civil disobedience was becoming the primary method of resistance to white oppression. While I was the only one tried on a felony charge, and sent to, state, to the state uh, prison system where I spent more than two years in Florida's notorious concentration camp. All of us spent time in jail and were subjected to Jim Crow justice, media slander, and horrible disruptions to life from which some never recovered. 50 years later, the city of St. Petersburg is paused to commit the same offense against the African community that the infamous 
despicable and dehumanizing mural represented in 1966. In calling for proposals to replace the city hall mural, the city is attempting to sanitize its oppressive anti-black history by using the act of tearing down the mural to disprove the continued existence of the conditions that led to its forcible removal 50 years ago. The city is offering a $10,000 bounty to an artist willing to lie by creating a replacement mural that, according to them, respects the events that caused the still vacant space where the mural once hung while celebrating the advances in civil rights and inclusivity in the city today. That's their, that's how they characterize it. First of all, it's important for me to say as the person who actually physically removed the mural, that as viciously oppressive as the mural was, the mural was only a symbol of the political and economic relationship existing between our people, white people, and the city of St. Petersburg. The motivation for the demonstration that led to the mural's removal was the announcement that the city was to receive a federal grant of several million dollars that would be used to beautify downtown St. Petersburg. We thought that such a grant that used tax dollars that Africans also contributed to could best be used to bring economic development to our impoverished community. It was the city's inability to appreciate this demand that resulted in our targeting the mural, the glaring example of the city's attitude toward black people. However, in preparing for this proposal, the city has made no attempt to talk to me or any of the other surviving men who removed the mural to determine what the events were that caused the still vacant space to be there. If such an investigation had taken place, it would have been determined that the actual conditions of existence of our people are worse today than they were when the mural was removed 50 years ago. Yes. 50 years ago, there were black businesses, a grocery, uh, there were grocery stores, there were full service, serv service stations and thriving uh, black business districts in this city in our communities. Today, South St. Petersburg is the largest at-risk zone in Pinellas County where 48% of our people live in poverty. Moreover, according to the city's data, black men account for 100% of the increase in poverty among men between the ages of 18 to 44. The city of St. Petersburg has spent 26 times more to manage what they call juvenile crime than to increase youth employment. It has spent 72 times more yes. on policing African neighborhoods than on strengthening neighborhood and business association. And this is according to data on the city's own website. And this is only a small sampling of the difficulties African find ourselves having to contend today, contend with today, 50 years after the removal of the mural. Certainly, this belies the suggestion of advances in civil rights and inclusivity. The city's new mural project is a cover-up for the crimes against the African community committed by the city today. In the first place, what is needed is a formal apology by the city yes. to the African community of this city for the years the humiliating mural abomination remained on the wall of the seat of government. Secondly, the city must make a public formal apology to the brave men who heroically removed the mural at the risk of life, liberty, and limb, and who were severely punished by the city for an act that is now disingenuously characterized as, according to them, of historical, a, a, a historically significant event in the history of the city of St. Petersburg. Finally, there must be black community control of the mural. The time when oppressive governments or their agencies can write and depict the histories and images of the oppressed is long gone. Every event in contemporary history should make this clear to even the most recalcitrant bigot in or out of government. 50 years ago, it appears that the Student Nonviolent Coordinating Committee and I were the only ones with the foresight 
to recognize the crime against the African community that was symbolized by the mural. I am certain that left to its own, the city would repeat its original error, thereby making it necessary again to forcibly remove its cruel depiction of our people and our history. We say black community control of the mural now. And I want to say that this press conference uh, for us is the first shot uh, in a battery of shots that we intend to fire throughout this year, celebrating a history of resistance uh, in this community uh, to uh, the deprivations, uh, to the acts of the city government that uh, have contributed uh, to uh, the poverty uh, and the conditions of existence for African people in this city. We will be able to bring before anybody who is interested the history of what brought about that mural's removal. We will offer an opportunity for anybody who wants to have a discussion with the people who, some of the people who tore that mural down uh, so that you can see how their imprisonment and the slander by the media here uh, con uh, has uh, affected their situation today uh, and the situation of their families. Uh, and for the city to uh, talk about now uh, replacing that mural uh, without even talking to the people who took the mural down that the city now wants to claim as some historical event of great significance to the city itself, uh, it is ridiculous that they should be able to do that on their own. Uh, we say black community control of the mural and that uh, this city government uh, has a lot that it has to answer for and this uh, press conference today is uh, to, to uh, signify that uh, it will definitely have to do that, that the black community is not going to tolerate uh, this miscarriage that uh, it intends uh, to do. So that effectively is what I would uh, say to you. And uh, Ghazi, yeah, Uhuru. 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 Now we'll go into questions. Anyone have a question from the Molly, media? What would you like to see up there? What I would like uh, to see, uh, first of all, if it's going to, anything happens there, I think this community needs to have a meeting and have that discussion among ourselves. That this government is incompetent, incapable of saying how black people should be represented. Even if they have some Negroes who work in there for them, uh, the fact is that the conditions of black people in this city are horrible. We live in a very rich city. All you gotta do is leave the black community and you see nothing but wealth. But our community has not benefited from it. The children of Joseph Wall did not benefit. Joseph Wall did not benefit the people who tore it down. And the people who were the basis for our demonstrations have done worse today. Yes. So for the city to put forth that somehow there's this great inclusivity and advances in civil rights is a farce. So we say black community control of the, of the mural and we will be conducting meetings in the African community to further this discussion so that we can decide what should go up there, if anything. you feel ownership by proxy to that space where the mural used to be then? Well, I'd rather own that by proxy than the jail cell and the prison cell that they put me in for <laughs> taking it down. And so uh, I feel I own something and uh, definitely the right to say what should be up there and not somebody sitting in a warm yeah. office uh, in this city or in some some dilettante that calls himself or herself an artist that never engaged in the struggle, had nothing to do with it, they do not have the right to say anything or to find the history and images of black people. You see what they did, left to their own, we heard not a single art critic, not a single artist that during the time complained about that picture on that wall. What gives them the ability today, 50 years later, uh, to say what should be on that wall. We say they don't have that ability, that that determination has to be made uh, by the African community ourselves. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Any more questions? All right, well, we would like to thank you for coming out. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Yeah. Molly, the photo, the, the, the mural was on the steps on the left, right? On the right, right, right. facing that, yeah. Okay, facing, facing towards where we are right now? Uh, facing towards where we are now. It's an eight by four, that's it. Okay. Yeah, I've seen. I've seen well, I'm yeah. very well aware. So if I go up the stairs and to the right, it would it would have been there. Yes, okay. and there's another mural on the opposite side, uh, and they were both there okay. too. I just want to get a shot of where yeah. it was. It's yeah. blank right now. It's blank right now. It's been blank for 50 years. Yes, sir. Yeah. yeah. So uh, I want to thank everybody for coming out. Uh, 
And uh, Chairman, um, yes, I got one question. Um, as far as how does this relate to um, Charlie Epto and um, what what was going on with 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 what the, the what's going on with that you know last year and how does this you know correlate with 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 that situation? I just want to say that. Um, we want to be having further discussions because we think that a lot of discussions need to be had. Yes. Um, you know, you got situations where white people put uh, images of uh, native people on their sports jerseys and make billions of dollars uh, off those yeah. images, despite the fact that the native people themselves are opposed to it. You've got situations where people in power uh, put despicable and horrible images of uh, the Prophet Muhammad uh, forward and call it the right to free speech to be able to do that. You've got situations where people who are colonizers and who are oppressors uh, exercise their free speech to depict and define uh, those who are oppressed by them in any fashion they want to. And I think there needs to be a lot of discussions happening around that uh, and people who call themselves artists have a greater responsibility uh, than to just uh, depict uh, the horrible, rotten uh, criminality uh, that is represented by the oppression of black people and other subject and colonized people. It's not going to be tolerated and I think that what you saw uh, in Paris was just an example of that and uh, uh, that people are not going to, to live with that anymore, that the oppressors are going to have to stop being oppressors and the way to make that happen of course is for the oppressed to rise up yes. and one act of rising up has to be to uh, take control of our own image our own definition of ourselves uh, and that's what uh, was happened here December 29th 1966 and uh, we'll be talking about that more and more so uh, thank you very much uh, Uhuru Okay. <laughs>